Those of you who were able to attend AU this year probably recognize this. It's a speaker that was built from the ground up using Fusion 360, Fusion Production, and Eagle. Then manufactured and assembled in a 2,000 square foot, fully functioning factory on the convention floor. No small feat from a logistics standpoint and not to mention getting the A-OK -okay from the organizers. But to really appreciate the hard work that went into this design and build, we want to create a rendering of it where you can see the internals. Changing opacity in the modeling workspace is simple, and we've long since had the ability to alter those settings. We'll do this with the wooden casing and the front grille. Quick side note, you will not see the opacity option for externally linked parts like these rubber feet. So if you need to adjust the transparency, you'll want to break the links or use another approach. Anyway, this tip is all about how to use transparency in the rendering environment. So when we switch to that workspace, it's a little surprise the previously defined opacity changes are lost. To fix this, you might try to right click on the model and access the options like we did in the modeling environment but you won't find opacity controls here. Why? Well, the rendering environment uses the material to drive the appearance. And if said material isn't transparent, you're not going to be able to switch it on the fly. And even if you dig into those appearances and edit the material, you'll still be hard pressed to find anything to change this, especially with a 3D wood material. But you can control pores, rays, ring thickness, and bump, all kinds of other options, which really makes this thing shine. I digress. To get back to a similar way it looked in the modeling environment, I might just try to hide the vent. But to make the enclosure transparent like I set out, we'll need to approach this with the material first. Let's set it to some sort of transparent material. Things like plastics, glasses, and others will work. But if you want some of that brown color to resemble the wood, it's best if there's some opacity to the material. I'll use a frosted glass, and to get a tint to it, I'll edit it right away. Here I'll try a multitude of different colors until I find just the right one. When I do, and close the appearance, this amazing design, right down to the Eagle created PCB board really starts to shine. Do note that these appearance changes will be made in the modeling environment too, but reapplying that wood is just a few clicks away. If you find that the frosted glass doesn't work or makes it too hard to see those internals you're trying to highlight, try a smoother version of glass or a different plastic. When you do, the new results might start to highlight another issue. Distortions. Depending on the curvature of your enclosure and other factors. If that's the case, Edit the material, and because it's a transparent one, you'll find options specific to that. If your goal is to reduce the distortion, lowering the refractive index closer to 1 should help. Every little change is helping dial in some amazing results. Thanks for watching, I hope that helps.